Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma ba'du fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Innama yu'minu bi ayatina al-lazina idha dhukhiru biha khurru sujjadan wa sabbahu bihamdi rabbihim wa hum la yastakbirun. تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا ومما رزقناهم ينفقون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله all praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most gracious the most merciful the nourisher the cherisher the sustainer of these multi-dimensional universes. We seek his guidance, we seek his forgiveness, and to him we all return. And our sincere greetings and heartiest salutations to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Alayhi Afdalu Salawati Wa Atammi Taslim And a very good morning to all of you and I thank all of you for coming and joining the session and especially I would like to thank the organizer of today's convention for organizing such an amazing convention and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this event for his sake and to make it beneficial for all of us Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen Dear brothers and sisters, the topic I'm supposed to talk about today is prostration, divine formula to cope with challenges. And at the very beginning, let me explain to you what is prostration, what is the essence of prostration. So dear brothers and sisters, we all know prostration means sajda. There is a surah in the Quran al kareem named after sajda, I mean surah to sajda, surah number 32. And this surah is the theme of today's convention, right? So, sajda, the word sajda, prostration, basically comes from the Arabic scale sajda yasjudu. It means khada'a, to make yourself submissive to anybody. The word sajda, Basically, it refers to present yourself or to lower yourself to somebody with full of solemnity and submission, with full of sincerity. In Arabic, we say, a sajda is wad'ul jabha, I mean the forehead, wad'ul jabha ala al-ardi khudu'aw wa tadarru'a. I mean, you put your forehead down, touching the ground, your hands are flat aside, Elbows are raised up and your knees and feet are touching the ground. This is sajda, right? You got the picture? When we offer sajda? So this is the visualization of sajda. This is called sajda. So sajda or prostration is the most iconic position in our daily prayer. Dear brothers and sisters, we all know we have four major position in our salah. If you see, we have standing, we have bowing, we have prostrating, and finally sitting. So prostrating or sajda is the most iconic position in uh, Muslim prayer. And except the salah, we can also offer prostration. Like we have three types of prostration beyond the salah. In our daily salah, we offer prostration, we, we perform sajda, and also outside the salah, we can also offer prostration. And there are three types of prostration. The number one is, we call it in Arabic, sajd to shukur, the prostration of gratefulness. When you get any very good news, you can offer sajda out of gratitude to Allah. And the second one, this is beyond Salah, outside of Salah, the prostration outside of Salah. So the second one is Sajdatu Tilawa, 
I mean, there are some specific verses in the Holy Quran. If you recite them, you're supposed to offer sajda. We call it sajda tilawa. And the last one, the sajda outside salah, it is sajda tu sahu. We call it sajda forgetfulness. If we make any mistake in our salah, so you are supposed to offer sajda. So these are the three types of sajda we can offer outside the salah, dear brothers and sisters. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ordered for prostration in many verses in the Holy Quran. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu urka'u wasjudu wa'budu rabbakum wa fa'alul khayra la'allakum tuflihun. I mean, O you believe, O you who have believed, bow down, prostrate yourself to me. I mean, perform sajda and worship your Lord, do good and you might be successful. So this is the verse number one. In another verse, in Surah Al-Hijr, Allah says, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ So glorify the praises of your Lord and be amongst those who perform sajda. So I just mentioned here two verses from the Holy Quran. You will find so many verses in the Holy Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically ordered us, the true believers, to perform sajda to him. And you also find so many hadiths mentioned in the books of hadith are talking about the virtue of sajda. I just mentioned here just one hadith. So the story was like that. One of the companions of the Prophet came to the Prophet and asked, Oh, the Messenger of Allah, tell me an act or about an act. If I do, Allah will admit me in Jannah. يدخلني الجنة. Then Prophet Islam replied him saying that عليك بكثرة السجود لله. You are supposed to offer more and more sajda. If you want to perform just a simple act and you want to enter paradise, عليك بكثرة السجود لله. You are supposed to offer more and more sajda. And when you perform a sajda, your rank will be updated. One sajda, one rank. And your sins will be removed. Allahu Akbar. Dear brothers and sisters, if we think, how many sajda we perform in a day? You have to feel it. By performing one sajda, my, my status is going up. In Zuhur prayer, we will perform so many sajda, right? By performing every single sajda, my status is going up. My rank is upgrading and my sins are being removed from me. Allahu Akbar. And you know the power of sajda? The fire of Jahannam, I mean the hell fire, cannot consume the forehead of those who perform sajda. Even once in his lifetime, I repeat. The fire of Jahannam, I mean the hell fire, cannot burn or consume the forehead of those who perform sajda even once in his lifetime. Allahu Akbar. Can we say together Allahu Akbar? Allahu Akbar. And it's narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari that after the day of judgment, the people of paradise will enter the paradise and the people of hellfire will enter the hellfire. Then Allah will talk to the angels and Allah will say, Oh, the angels, go to the hellfire and search there if you get somebody has a very dharra amount of iman in his heart. If you get someone, he has a very dharra, I mean tiny amount of iman in his heart, in his qalb, let him out from Jahannam. So the angels will start to search in Jahannam and luckily they, they will get one person he has a tiny amount of Iman in his heart, so they will make him out from the Jahannam. His entire body, it is mentioned in the Hadith, his entire body from up to down is burnt because of the fire of Jahannam. His entire body is burnt, except the place of Sajda, Allahu Akbar. Except this place. So, just keep in your mind that the fire of Jahannam cannot consume your forehead, anybody's forehead who offers.